hello Sasha, Alice, hello, hello, Emma, Julia. Okay, now I can't keep up with names. How are you guys doing? Um, if I haven't met you before, my name's Scarlett. I'm gonna teach you guys 45 minutes of lovely, lovely, soothing, stretchy um, yin yoga. Um, it is a joy to be on the Core Collective timetable and be missing you guys in the studio. So let me know how you are. Drop me a comment, drop me a wave if you want to. And um, I'm just gonna let this roll a little longer before I start. If anybody's feeling injured, um, if there's anything going on in your body that could be um, like anything to do with the knees or maybe in the wrists or in your neck, um, just let me know of any injuries, drop them in the comments and I will make a suggestion. Um, hello, hello, hello. So nice to see everybody. Have you been doing all the core collective workouts? How have they been treating you? Some of them are tough, right? Real tough. Um, the great thing about yin, yin yoga, is that it's going to, it's not gonna be easy, but it's not a workout in the same way that power yoga is. So if you're new to yin, I'll just let you know that we, hey Hannah, we hardly, um, we keep static postures in yin, so we are always close to the mat. We hold stretches for a super long time. And the other amazing thing about it is that you can vary your poses in so many different ways. So there's some poses where you're gonna feel, oh God, I'm really feeling like not flexible enough for this one. And that's completely fine, right? And there's gonna be other poses where maybe you drop in and you're like, whoa, I feel like I can really easily do this stretch. Um, so you're gonna need, if you check out my mat right now, this mat looks like a bed, okay? This is kind of how I want yours to look. So I've got my, bro my block, if you don't have a block, then just grab a book or something. I've got loads of cushions. So if you want something soft to be able to lean on, then just grab yourself a couple of cushions. Um, obviously a candle and a house plant, they're optional, but you know, they do help out to the atmosphere. So I'll just leave it 20 seconds for you guys to grab any props that you might need. I need your stretch class. Yes, Tony, miss seeing you in the studio. The yin is going to be very, very stretchy. Um, last thing, playlist. Um, Core Collective very kindly put a playlist up for me in a story just now. If you search Look Closer on um, your favorite streaming music app, with the green logo. If you search, look closer, and then the um, playlist is called Core Collective Yin, and we'll go from there. So hit play on that, and then you can practice to some really lovely soothing music. Okay, we're gonna get going. The first thing that I really want you guys to do is to stretch out in downward facing dog. So before we start getting all calm and juicy into the mat, come to your downward facing dog, and just start to pedal your heels. So your optimum down dog, guys, is your hands slightly further forward than your shoulders, right? And this is for any flexibility level. You're gonna tuck your toes, take a super deep breath in, and then exhale to lift your hips all the way up to the sky. So do that for me now. Come to a downward facing dog. And no, we're not gonna be here for long, but I really need those hamstrings to just be a little bit open. So no matter your um, ability or your perceived ability, just start to push individually each heel to the ground. And if you can, start to bring in a deeper breath, please, through the nose. So close the mouth gently and start to push the mat away with the hands and take a deeper breath. Now in yin, we do something where we push towards something called an edge. Now with an edge, I want you to feel like, and this is for later, that the muscle group or groups that I'm talking about are feeling a little bit pushed, right? But if you start to feel like there is any pain, then I want you to come straight out of it. We only want to feel stretches in the muscles. We don't want to feel pain anywhere that is not necessary. So take three to five more deep breaths in your down dog and just pedal your heels. Start to try and make every inhale about three or four seconds long seconds 
and start to make every exhale three or four long seconds. And then come to a neutral downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in for me and then exhale to just allow your knees to drop to the mat to your tabletop pose. Now you may need a break for this little bit of an arm stretch and quad stretch that we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask you to sit your bum down between your heels. If that's not accessible, take a book or a brick and just sit down on top of that. Let either side of your legs, just fold it down either side. And then sit the spine nice and tall and just bring your arms all the way out in front for me. We're gonna take a little bit of a shoulder blade opener. So just wrap the right arm on top of the left, cross the forearms and press your palms together. This is your eagle arms. And then start to soften your eyelids down. So just take three or four breaths as you drop into the mat and into your space. Feel your belly rise as you breathe in, the expansion of your ribcage and the softening of your diaphragm as you breathe out. And then you're gonna spend the next five breaths just lifting your elbows a little higher and rounding that upper back, right? So you just create that space between the shoulder blades. And now imagine you could direct your inhale to the very center of the back of your spine. So just take a deep breath for three, two, one. Breathing out for three, two, one. One more like that, elbows a little higher, breathe in. Hold it here, elbows high, breathe out. Take one more deep inhale. And then just let your arms unwrap on the exhale, switching sides, left arm on top of right. So really exaggerate that so you feel like you can wrap your forearms and your hands. Take a deep breath in, lift those elbows, and then exhale, just round that upper back, lift the elbows, and then try and breathe more space into the very back center of your body. Breathing in for three, Breathing out for three. One more, breathing in for three. Breathing out for three. Okay, now deep breath in. And just release those arms as you breathe out. Last one guys, just gonna interlace the fingers together push the air away from you in front towards the front of your mat take a deep breath in to sit tall now keep your back straight breathe out drop your chin and just round your upper back push the air away in front of you imagine you're trying to get your back to touch your back wall create all that space deep breath now into the back of the spine breathing for two breathing for one and releasing, hands all the way back to center. If you're sat on a brick, just take a moment to remove it, put it out the way for now. So we're gonna come briefly back to a downward facing dog. So press your hands in front of you, tuck both sets of toes, breathing in on an, on an inhale, and then just exhale to lift your hips all that way back up to the sky for your downward facing dog. Create that space between the shoulders. Maybe take a bit of movement in your hips from side to side. And just tuning into any noises around you, any sensations or your senses. So maybe it's the sound of my voice, or maybe it's the sound of your music. And today we're just gonna embrace with this class the idea of slowing down a little and sitting in stillness, feeling into those deep set muscle tissues that we don't often get to when we practice regular yoga or other forms of exercise. So start to take a look forward towards your hands. Take a breath in that lifts your right leg up to the sky behind you and then take a step with that right foot all the way between your hands and drop your left knee down to the mat. So already you're in your low lizard lunge, right? 
move your back knee as far back as feels comfortable for you you're going to get a double whammy with this stretch so we're looking at a little bit of the inside of the front leg so a little bit of the groin in here and then on the back leg this whole hip flexor and quad on that left side is going to start to do a lot of stretching so you might find that you want to start up here maybe hands on on your leg or you might find that you can start with your hands inside that right foot just make sure that your right knee is right on top of your ankle and have your hands comfortably down. So for you, that might be grabbing a brick or a, or a book and placing your hands right on top of it like that. And if you wanna feel super, super comfortable, maybe instead you're taking a pillow and placing your hands on like that. So the higher lifted you are, the easier this stretch is gonna start and we're gonna spend two or three minutes just being here and just dropping into this stretch. And I'm gonna do a little bit of talking while we're in it. If that's not for you, then just try and zone me out and feel the sensation in your body. So with the hands pressed down and with your right foot pressed firmly down under your right knee. Have a sense that the features of your face are softening down. So you could close your eyes and soften your mouth. And it sounds a little weird, but even your tongue, just try and make that relax and flatten down between your bottom teeth. So there's no effort anywhere in the body other than where it needs to be. Now start to take in a deeper breath for me through the nose, lips closed. Now all these stretches in the end, there's going to be a point in which you could either drop deeper or you could pull yourself away from them. Okay, and that's I think when you know that the pose is kind of starting to work. So every time you breathe in, you'll probably notice the pose becomes a bit stronger or feels a bit tighter. And every time you breathe out, just have a sense almost that you could ease even by half a millimetre deeper into that pose. especially if you're doing all of Core Collective's other workouts, you'll probably notice that you have tight quads and tight hip flexors. And yin is one of the only forms of movement where you really actively try to be not active, right? You just tease open muscle. You just lean into the stretch. So bring your attention to your breath and we'll take about five more in this pose. If you feel you can drop any deeper, it's gonna be your hands coming down to the mat, or maybe it's gonna be your forearms coming all the way down to the mat. Completely up to you. Wherever you end up today, take a breath in, and bring your awareness to where you feel the sensation, and allow it to sit. So without escaping the pose right now, just take a really deep breath in. When you breathe out, start to find those hands under the shoulders if you're not there already. Take a deep breath in and then come to a tabletop pose. So gently pull that leg under your body until you're in tabletop. Take an inhale that lifts your tailbone and your chin up. So you stretch across the front of your belly. And then as you breathe out, round that back, spread a space between your shoulders. Let's take two more. Breathe in, lift the chin and tailbone up. Exhale, suck the belly in, round the shoulders. Inhaling deeply through the nose. Exhale, push the round away. And then just drop back to that neutral flat back. Hands come forward momentarily. Tuck toes now. With your trained, deep nasal breath, it's a deep breath into tuck toes, and an exhale, down dog, hips to sky. Have your intention to be toward the back of the room, 
pushing the ground away with the hands, relaxing your head between your shoulders. And just notice your right leg, notice your left, front of the hip, front of the quad. When you're ready, and next inhale, we'll lift your left leg all the way up to the sky behind you. And we're gonna step it between the hands all the way forward. Just drop your right knee straight down. So already we're back here. You'll know now how it feels to pull that back knee further back and untuck your toe. So just tease in that space, right? How far forward can we drop into the right hip flexor here and into the right quad? Now, the last thing to mention is you'll notice if you're feeling lazy in it, your bum kind of pops back. So it does this anterior tilt backwards. My advice is to imagine that you're giving your lower back this posterior tilt, which means forward. The minute you tuck your rib cage to the center and your lower back forward, that quad on the right ooh, is going to feel a lot more stretchy. So whichever version you want to take, guys, you're dropping your hands down, taking your left foot slightly further out to the side. Notice how the stretch feels. Use props if you need to underneath your hands. Keep those hips level. It might mean you have a tight body, yes, but most human beings in yoga practice need to support their body with props. So take another three deep breaths for me. Should feel really juicy now. Next breath out, you're just going to slowly push your hips back in space. Ooh. Bring that left leg all the way back under to tabletop. So place your shoulders all the way over your wrists and the hips over the knees. We're going to bring those knees together, so just squish them together at the back of the mat tucking the toes and just walk the hands back until you're sat directly on your heels. So to be clear, my feet aren't untucked, they are tucked like this right toe. And you're gonna sit down on top of your feet. If it feels excruciating, just drop down to the ground, that's fine. If you're okay in this, drop your shoulders, drop your hands. Allow your feet, the soles and the toes to open and stretch a little more. So we're going to take 10 deep breaths in this pose. 
If you have super stretchy soles of your feet, walk your knees further forward until you feel it. We rarely stretch the soles of the feet. We spend so much time on our feet. Even when we're sitting, there's like a little pressure there, but mostly when we're walking, running, working out, and this is gonna open up all that fascia, all that muscular web, right, on the soles of your feet. Take three more deep breaths for me, with a soft face and soft shoulders. Try not to show it on your face. Deep breath in, and then pull those hands all the way forward. We're gonna take a little back bend now, but it's gonna be on your stomach. So just allow the body to roll all the way down to the mat and come onto your elbows for me with the hands out in front. So this is already a little bit of a strong back bend. Some people might find that this already feels quite strong and that's fine. If that's you, then just stay here. Again, I can't say this enough. Lower part of your back, imagine you are pushing your tailbone and pubic bone down into the mat so there's a little bit of tension in your glutes and then without moving your hands forward so straight in front of you take a deep breath in and then exhale up to seal pose if you want to shoulders stay dropped now's where the breath can feel really intense right we are expanding all the way through the front of the body the rib cage and in through that spine so carry on pushing your pelvis downwards so that you don't compress your lower back. Keep those shoulders soft. Try not to show me any tension in your face. And if it becomes too much, just drop down. Now take some really expansive breath, please. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling slowly through nose. In through nose. Out through nose. Now we're going to take 10 more breaths in this pose. If it's too much, drop the forearms down. And I'm just going to tell you what this magical slow breath does as well. So when you breathe ujjayi breath, so through the nose, a little bit of a tight throat, controlling that inhale and exhale. Your whole vagus nerve, so your central nervous system that starts in your brain, makes its way down your back, and then goes off into loads of tiny little nerves around your body. That whole nerve system is completely stimulated and quietened down, taking you into a bit of rest and repair. So just take three more of those for me. Bending the back, lifting the chest, dropping the shoulders. Next, breathe out, let it go and really feel your stomach peel all the way down to the mat. Hands are gonna come under shoulders. Tuck those toes. This is the hardest this class is gonna get. Give me a push up to a plank and then send your hips high to down dog. So now we're a little more open, right? So notice, how do the backs of the legs feel? How does the side of your ribs feel as you push your hips up to the sky? Notice maybe how it's easier to control your very breath. Now when you're ready, we're gonna take a look forward and breathe in to bend the knees and you're gonna take two steps forward between your hands and then just come to take a seat right by your heels. Press those feet out in front. We're coming through a reverse tabletop, but it's just so we can get a very certain stretch that I've got in mind. So press the feet down, hands come behind you and fingertips are gonna face forward. We are going to briefly lift up into reverse tabletop. So with an inhale, spread your shoulders wide, squeeze your bum, lift your body up into that perfect flat line. And then from here, we're gonna bend the right knee into the chest and extend the right leg up towards the sky. When you're there, flex your foot, cross your right ankle on top of your left knee, push your right knee down toward the ground, and then sit your bum back down on the mat. So everybody's a fan of pigeon pose, right? Love pigeon pose. 
This is like a version of that that's sat up. Now, if you already feel like this is super strong on your right glute, then stay here or even walk your hands further back, right? But if you want to, the aim over the next minute or so is to walk your bum super close to your front heel and your hands super close to the base of your back. The tighter you can press your body into this little knot, the stretchier that glute is gonna feel, okay? So for me, where I wanna be is hands a little further back, seat a little further back, starting here. And maybe over the next minute, we're gonna walk the hips closer to this left foot. Now make sure the right foot is flexed, toes to sky. Make sure the right knee is pressing forward. Now don't show it to me on your face. The eyes are soft, the nose is soft, the lips are soft. Shoulders are wide and proud. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhaling through the nose. Again, just imagining with every breath out that that little place you can feel the stretch. So that bottom right hand corner of your right glute. Think of where your thigh bone meets into your pelvis. That is the part of the body we're getting into now. And it's a huge joint, right? So even though we need to treat it with care, you can also be in a stretch here for quite a long time. The more we stretch, the more we push within reason, you're kind of stimulating that area of your body and saying, hey, I need blood flow in that area or I need energy in that area. I need to heal myself quicker in that area. So if you feel you can, start to close the space a little more between your hands, your hips and your front foot. And we're going to take 10 more deep breaths in this pose. And when your mind wanders, remember that's okay. And we're all just human. But try just for a mere 10, 20 seconds now to engage with whatever's coming up in that area of your body. When we practice yin, we practice, in a way, patience. How can we make this space a little bit more full of ease, a little bit more serene? So take a deep breath in, and then very carefully, unpeel that foot, place both feet back down on the mat. And I'm just gonna move myself back a little bit. We're gonna come back through that reverse table for the left hand side. So press your hands down, spread your shoulders, open your chest up. So imagine you're pushing the shoulder blades together at the back. Now press the feet into the earth, use an inhale for a bit more energy. Squeeze the glutes, breathe in, lift all the way up until you find that flat line with your body, shoulders are open. And then with control, you push that right foot down harder, squeeze and lift the left knee into the chest, extend the leg up to the sky. Flex the foot, cross the left ankle over the right knee. Now imagine you're pushing the left knee down to the ground, flex the foot, take a deep breath in, and then gently let your hips come all the way back down. Now you'll know already, how does this feel? Too tight, too easy? So wherever you are with it, you can adjust your body to start at a place where you feel like, you know, there's a little bit of a push here, but it's not quite at my edge, right? It's not quite where I know I can take it. And I'm not saying push yourself to pain. If you feel any pain, you're gonna come straight out of this pose. But see it as a version of pigeon, where you're getting into this glute on the left-hand side. So where your thigh bone meets your hip socket. We are easing a little bit more blood flow, a little bit of pressure and a little bit of strain into that space, okay? So about one minute here of super deep breath. And remember every inhale is long and drawn out. And every exhale is long and drawn out. Your eyes are soft, the nose and the mouth are soft. And 
it's very easy in any form of movement or exercise to feel the need to strain or to compensate with different parts of the body. And in this, although I do want you to push a little, I'd rather you felt a sense of softness and relaxation. So if it's ever too much, just ease your hands back and take a bit of a rest. Remember, keep that knee pushing forward. Keep your left toes flexed. If you can close the gap anymore at this point, then give that a go. Final 10 breaths, inhaling deeply through nose. Exhaling through nose. So all that tension that maybe, maybe has built up around that glute muscle from all the other exercises that you guys do. We're just easing a bit of space now into that. Take another two super deep breaths. And on your second exhale, very carefully, we peel that foot free, place the feet down. Now everyone's favorite pose, and maybe one that has a lot of um, controversy, I guess, because it's one where everybody wants to be able to touch their toes. So take a seat and extend your legs all the way out in front of you. We're gonna take a forward fold, right? Which I feel very passionately about because of how many different versions there are and how many I'm gonna be able to give you today. So the version I'm gonna take, let me just show you how much it takes to sometimes be able to touch your toes, if at all. For the version I'm gonna take, there's gonna be a pillow right under my knees. So my knees are gonna stay lifted this whole time. Even if you are mega flexible, just notice how it feels, right? Shift your bum back a little so you feel like both sit bones are on the ground. Either put something under your knees, especially if you struggle to reach forward, or just soften the knees up, no prop needed. Now flex your toes up towards your body, inhale, lift your arms all the way up. Stay here as you breathe out and we're just gonna get the upper body on point. So space between the shoulders, spine nice and tall, and imagine the ribs are growing away from the sit bones, right? So your back is this gorgeous straight line really lovely straight line. Now imagine that you're pulling in your lower belly, so your transverse abs from your belly button down. Imagine you could suck that in, keep the knees soft, take a deep breath in to lengthen up and reach, and then exhale to start reaching forward. Reach with your ribs and your back, not your arms. Reach forward, see where your hands land. Maybe it's the feet, maybe it's the mat, maybe it's somewhere on your ankles or legs. And wherever you land, remember to let it go, and then it's not important, okay? This is all now for the backs of the legs, so all the way through the hamstrings, the lower, middle, and upper back, we're gonna get a deep stretch. So take a hold of whatever you can, maybe it's the mat, legs, feet. On your next breath in, straighten your arms, lift up halfway and look forward for length. And then exhale away from your sit bones, bend the elbows, drop your head down. So there's that slight awareness that we're pulling in the lower belly from the belly button down. There's the awareness that you're filling your rib cage every time you breathe in. And that the middle back lengthens forward with that inhale as well. And the exhale is like a little bit of a drop and a surrender all the way down. If you're mega flexible, maybe you've got a brick in front of your feet so you can reach even further forward. Another way to take this if you feel inflexible, maybe, is to sit yourself on a brick to tilt your pelvis a little differently. So we're gonna have about one more minute here dropping down. So if you follow any yin, or you've practiced yin before, you might know that it has a lot to do with, or one of the belief systems is a lot to do with energy lines and energy fields in the body. 
and this pose in particular is supposed to be really good for cleansing a lot of what's going on inside. So especially to do with a couple of the organs, like the kidneys, which have a lot to do with ensuring blood flow gets to the best parts of the body. So there's an idea in the end that by compressing these areas, by stretching them out, you're able to free up that space and send a little bit more goodness to those areas. So three more breaths now. Inhale to lengthen the spine forward. Exhale to just drop and soften. So stay here for a deep breath in. I know it's tempting to crawl out and then just exhale to ease the spine all the way up. If you need to take a little movement from right to left, take a little movement from right to left. We're gonna take one more forward fold today. So start with no props. If you want to sit on something underneath your bum, then do to lift your hips up. I'm gonna ask you to make your uh, Baddha Konasana like butterfly pose. You just press the feet together, make a big, big diamond, right, with your knees. And have a couple of pillows ready. I like to put mine maybe one today on top of my feet. The idea is that you're either gonna drop forward really, really casually, you know, like drop and curl the back. Or if you can, if this is available to you today, forearms are gonna slide right under your shins and calves and you're gonna take a hold of your feet or just let your hands face all the way up to the sky. So again, you'll feel this hopefully a little bit on the inner legs, the outer legs, and that curl of your back. So wherever you decide to go today, and whether it's with a pillow, to rest your head, you're gonna to start to come into that now. So for me, I can just about slide my arms underneath the base of my legs, and then maybe my head's gonna drop down as I breathe out. And let your palms face upward if you're here with me, fingers curl in. A little bit like you're kind of in a surrender or just waiting to receive something with the hands. And then start to bring in some deep breath through the nose, please. Remember the eyes are soft, the nose and the mouth are soft. And when the mind wanders, which inevitably, of course, it does, we just notice and acknowledge and then take a moment to bring that awareness back into the body. Noticing A, how it feels, where we feel it, whether that serves us as a movement and noticing B, whether you want to drop any deeper. So give me five more deep breaths. Expanding the ribs with every breath in. Softening with every breath out. So staying here for your next inhale. And then exhaling to gently pull yourself up and away from that pose. Mm, yin, is, yin makes me feel sleepy. <laughs> so now we're gonna take a spinal twist on our backs. So I'm gonna come to lie down on my back and I'm gonna stop being able to see you, but I'm gonna assume that you are doing this with me, okay? So it's a little bit of a, a variation on a spinal twist. So you guys are used to, or you would have done before, this twist where we bring a leg in and we take to one side. So that's your classic spinal twist. And I'm gonna take that, but I'm gonna build two extra bits on top of that today. Now, again, you know the rules. If it's too much, we're not pushing past anything, okay? So come to lie down on your back. And we're going to bring the right knee all the way into the body, flex the foot, and take a deep breath in and then take a roll all the way onto that left hip and let your right knee drop to the side. 
Allow a bit of pressure with your left hand onto that leg and squeeze that knee a little bit closer in towards your rib cage. Try and keep your right shoulder blade flat. So I want this twist, please, to come from the middle of your spine, not from the ability of your shoulder to roll over and meet your back. Does that make sense? Both shoulders are completely flat. Now feel the twist in your middle back, so your thoracic spine. In the middle of the back, the vertebrae align in such a way that they allow your back to twist with quite a lot of mobility. So try and ensure that you're feeling it there and not in your lower or upper back. So step two, if you want to take it, we're going to, with the left hand, take the outside of the right foot and straighten this leg all the way out to the side. Okay, so if you want to do that, be my guest. Left hand, right foot, straighten leg all the way out to the side. Okay, so that's step two. If you want to take step three, I think it's called a cat's whisker. You're going to bend the left knee so your left heel comes in and you're going to grab the left toes with the right hand and stretch the whole of that left quad. So you've tied yourself in like this little pretzel knot. Again, both shoulders are flat. Notice where you're feeling it in the body. As we take time just to be. And whether that means for you today that your being is a happy one, maybe not so much a happy one. Maybe you've been contemplating a little bit today like me, and that's fine. Notice the feeling in that right hamstring. Notice the feeling in that left quad. Notice if you can breathe any deeper now into the ribcage. Allowing yourself now that feeling of a little bit of surrender into the earth beneath your back. Take three more deep breaths for me on this side. On a breath out, release those right toes, bring the leg in, come to lie flat on the back again, both legs central. And we're going to take that other side. So remember, there's three stages. You're only doing whichever of the three you're happy to do. So with both legs all the way out. This time, we're going to bring that left knee all the way in. Start to roll onto the right hip and drop that left knee over. With your right hand, you can apply a little bit of pressure there onto that left knee. So notice already whether your shoulders are flat. And if not, how can we lift the left knee up? and drop the left shoulder down. So you should never feel like you have to compensate by really forcing that left knee down to the ground. Let the shoulders be flat and just let the left knee be where it comfortably sits. And then if you want to straighten that left leg out to the side and take the outside of your foot with your hand, then you can. My wall's gonna stop me doing that. <laughs> but if you can straighten your leg, then please do. If you want to bend the right knee, right toes come in, and take the foot with your left hand. Then assume that posture now. Feel the stretch in the front of that right quad as it sits under your body. And see if you can use your left hand on your right foot to assume a deeper twist through those ribs. Now start to bring in a calming breath through the nose. Expanding on every inhale. And softening on every exhale. Remember the eyes are soft, the nose and the mouth are soft. And when the mind wanders, remember where you feel this in your body. Sometimes it's nice just to be able to feel.
take another three deep breaths for me here. And then very slowly releasing those right toes, bringing both knees into the chest. And just giving your legs a hug with your hands. So maybe you can even bring your forehead or your nose right up towards your knees and take a little rock from right to left. Now see how open you feel in this final pose, which is your happy baby. So happy baby, we spread the knees and the ankles. We take the insides of the big toes or the outsides of the feet. And we try and pull the knees in toward the armpits. You're gonna be here for about 30 seconds. So in this time, maybe play with straightening one leg and bringing the opposite knee in. And vice versa, straighten the other leg, bring opposite knee in. And you might not even realize how very much more open and pliable right now that your muscles are compared to when we started this movement. And every time we come to the mat, remember it's just a continuous practice. Some days might feel great, some days might not feel great. But I think the very fact you showed up, you dedicated some time today to move, is always enough. Always. Let those knees drop in, guys. Any final movements you need, you can take those. Otherwise, please come to lie on your back and you can take a few moments now for a bit of a relaxing Shavasana. So feel free to lie on your back, to listen to the last track of the playlist, to let your body almost marinate and ruminate in the lovely, lovely things that come from stretching focusing and awareness. And if you're still with me and you haven't fallen asleep, which is a very, very big side effect of yin, I'm gonna say thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions today that you didn't have time to drop in, then my personal Instagram handle is at lookcloseryoga, all one word, at lookcloseryoga. So feel free to message me or drop any comments into there. Um, if not, I'll just tell you that tomorrow, Monday, whole new week, at 8 a.m. you've got a sculpt with Charlotte. At 12.30, you've got Pilates with Lottie. And at 6 p.m. you've got a stretch and mobility with Rose. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, thank you. Anyone who said thank you. Message me with any questions. Otherwise, Thank you so much for joining me. I cannot wait to see you in person, okay? At a studio. Cool collective. <laughs> see you soon. Lots of love. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Bye.